up you guys welcome back to my channel so today it's gonna to be a little bit different here I'm doing something new today I'm going back and using an older palette to do more looks with it than I did in the past so I don't know if any of you guys follow I'm sure most of you do actually <laughs> I don't know if you know why I would ask but Sam Ravendahl has been doing a thing on her channel called project throwback where she goes and uses palettes to get more use out of them instead of going out and buying new ones all the time. And I've been thinking about it and I really feel like I would like to do something similar. Now, Sam has been doing it in a way where she uses that palette for the whole month for all of her tutorials. I don't think that I want to commit to that because I know that a lot of you guys look forward to seeing me use new releases as well, but I'm going to pepper them in from time to time because I feel like A, it's good to go back and use the makeup that we actually already have. Not every single video needs to be a reason to go out and buy something new. I love buying new makeup as much as the next person, but like it gets to be a lot after a while. And I also feel like for me, it gives me a chance to be a little bit more creative because a lot of times if there are like a few weeks in a row where there isn't like a new palette launch out, I won't really do a video where I do a bunch of new eye looks because I don't have a new palette to work with and I don't like being like put in that little box, you know? I wanna be able to make content when I see fit. So if I feel like I wanna do something creative, I wanna be able to just like reach for the stuff I already have and like do something creative from it and not be beholden to the latest launches. So shout out to Sam for the idea of Project Throwback. Obviously, like I said, I'm not doing it quite the way that she did, but I like the concept. And today, because it is the most requested, I actually ran a poll and uh, it turns out this is indeed the most requested according to my poll as well. We're going back into Urban Decay Born to Run. And I know I used this in my last video, but it was like the quickest little look in the world and didn't really use much of the palette. So uh, we're going back today. I actually ran a bunch of polls on Instagram and I asked you guys um, what Morphe palette you would like to see me go back into. And it seems like hands down, the one you guys are looking forward to with that one is the original Jaclyn Hill palette, which I definitely can see myself doing a three looks video with that. So that might be the next one of the little throwback videos that we do. Also, by the way, I got new wallpaper in the background. Hope you guys like that. So like I said, today I'm gonna to be doing three looks with the Born to Run palette. I am going to do it in a way where I pair each one with a different lip art as well, because you guys really, really seem to enjoy those videos and I enjoy making them. So that's what I'm gonna do. And as you're well aware, those videos are really, really long. So I'm gonna be quiet and get right into the video. But first, if you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe because I would love to have you around for future videos. And also don't forget to take a second and leave a like on this video because it helps me out and it helps me know that you guys are enjoying this type of content. And especially when I introduce something new on my channel, that's when I need to know the most. So if you like the idea of this whole throwback thing, please click that like button and I will be thrilled to have your feedback. I think that's all we need to get out of the way before we get started. So let me just clip this hair back and zoom in and we'll get started on the first look. For the first look, I want to do something like a little bit Twiggy inspired. And I think that I want to take that Twiggy look, which is usually neutral tones and do it in a way where we're incorporating some like dreamy, warm pink and orange shades. So I'm going to start by picking up my BH number five brush and I'm going to go into the shade Still Shot, and I'm packing that into the crease area and a little bit higher than the crease, kind of bringing it up toward the eyebrow. How far toward the eyebrow? I don't know yet. We'll, uh, we'll see where the road takes us. Next, I'm gonna pick up a BH number seven. This is very similar to the number five, except it is smaller. And then I'm gonna go into this shade Hellride, which is this berry shade. I'm going to place it in the crease as well, keeping it more concentrated with that smaller brush. Now for the Twiggy style look, the crease is defined and then the lid is actually like kind of like a cut crease, but it never closes on the end. So I'm gonna do my best to keep the crease looking pretty differentiated from the lid, but I'm gonna cut it anyway, so it's not gonna be like, it's, it's not super important to keep it separate, you know? So now I wanna cut the crease and I'm going to, instead of cutting the crease, 
round like I normally would or just in the center like I normally would. I'm gonna cut the crease and then flick it out so it like kind of disperses out onto the rest of my head. So I'm using the Kat Von D Brow Pommy in Whiteout and I'm also using my Nabla Cut Crease Brush and I'm just gonna go right above my natural crease and stamp out the shape that I want and then I'll go in and clean it up and make sure that it actually looks like a solid line afterward. And toward the end, while it's still wet, I'm just gonna take that white and I'm gonna just blend it in to my natural skin tone with a brush because obviously it kind of needs to fade into the rest of my face because it's coming to the end of the eye here and the rest of my face isn't white out colored. Now that we have that shape down, I don't want this to be necessarily stark white. So I'm gonna go into this shade Breakaway, which is kind of like a satiny whitish pink. I'm just gonna pat out any creasing in the base because I have finkly, shrinkly, wrinkly eyelids and that happens sometimes. And just pack that shade down over the white. And once I get toward the line, I'm just gonna pick up this smaller flat brush. This is also a BH brush. I'm really in my BH brushes today. This is a six or a nine, a nine. For that more 60s twiggy-ish look, what they always used to do specifically on her makeup was they would do a line of black liner, but not a wing. So the line kind of continued a little past the inner corner and a little past the outer corner, but not lifted. Personally, the outer corner, I don't think is super flattering on me, but I'm gonna do the line across the lid. I'm just gonna end it right there and kind of like, end it in a line that goes like man. If you want to, you can do the full on like half moon shape on that portion of your eye too. For me, I just find it incredibly unflattering. So tailor it for yourself, you know what I mean? This is the e.l.f. H2O Proof Aligner Pen. So I'm gonna try this out. I actually kind of like that. I don't know why I don't wear my eyeliner like this more often. Okay, so I went ahead and concealed underneath my eyes and put down a bunch of powder in case we get any fallout. I actually don't usually find a ton of fallout with this palette, but under the eyes and sometimes like on a fluffier brush, you just never know. So I'm gonna go back into still shot again. This time I'm using my Luxie 141 mini round brush and I'm going to start smoking out the lower lash line, basically the same way that we did the crease. And I'm also bringing the color out a little bit past the actual end of the lower lash line. And now I'm gonna take a small flat brush back into Hell Ride again, and I'm gonna push that into the lower lash line as well. So for the waterline, I wanna keep it very bright and open. So I'm going to grab my Walk of Shame liner pencil from Urban Decay. At this point, I'm gonna add some lashes and some mascara that'll really bring this look together. But if you are going for like an actual classic twiggy look, what they used to do is take a liquid liner or it was probably a cake liner back then and draw some faux eyelashes on the bottom lash line. I'm gonna skip that today because I have like a little crinkle directly underneath my lower lash line, which makes those things never really sit flat. But if you wanna add them, then by all means. Before I throw the lashes on, I'm just waiting for my lash glue to dry. I kind of want to add a little bit of glitter to this. So I'm going to grab the color Grind in the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitter Liners. And I'm just going to run that along the top line of that cut that we made. This is like a multicolor glitter, but it has mostly pink in it. So it really just fits nicely with what we already I'm did. I'm also gonna take that same glitter and I'm gonna pick it up on a pencil brush and I'm gonna use that to pack it on the color that we put already underneath my lower lash line, just to kind of almost make that look like a glitter version of that shade. Now that's a little bit more fun. I feel better about it. I'm ready to add lashes. Okay, so I went ahead and added lashes. Honestly, um, I don't know what lashes these are. I know they're a House of Lashes set because they were like in my little pile of House of Lashes 
lashes. But for a look like this, I always recommend something that has more of the volume and more of the length in the center so that way you get more of a round look rather than something that flares toward the end, which would give you more of like a lifted wing shape to your eye when you apply them. So with the eyes done, we can now move on to the wearable version of the lip. So I'm gonna start by lining my lips with the Nabla lip pencil in the shade Touch Me, which is a little bit deeper and a little bit more warm, but essentially on my lips, but better color for me. And I'm gonna top it with a TARDIS gloss in the color Insta Famous, which you guys might remember I got in one of my boxy charms recently. And this is the first look with the more wearable version of the lip. So for the lip art version of this look, I want the lip to be in the same sort of color family as the eye, but I want it to be like a dreamy sunset cloudy sky. Now, everyone and their mom who does lip art has done a cloud look before. Honestly, I've done it with like a little bit of like an abstract twist. I've seen a lot of people do it, but the person that I saw it do it in these colors that inspired this idea, her name is Beauty Becky. I will link her lip art in the description down below. It is beautiful. It's gonna be a little bit different than mine because I'm gonna take the colors a little bit more in the purple direction and I'm also going to add a gloss over the whole thing. But I feel like that's the kind of direction I wanna go in with this lip art because I don't know, this just puts me in the mood for like a dreamy, like fantasy sort of a feel. So that's what we're going for. So for the sunset sky look, I'm gonna use a few different products. I'm going to use two of the Lime Crime plushies. These are lovely for this kind of lip art because they give like a sheer sort of effect. So it adds to like that dreaminess of it. The colors I'm using are Butterscotch and Turkish Delight. And I will be also dipping into the Suva Beauty Hydro Liners in the color Scrunchy and Space Panda. And then topping the whole thing with my favorite lip art gloss. This is the Popstar Cosmetics Diamond Gloss. So between the time that I filmed the first look and now, I decided that I want to do all of the creative lips in a theme. So we're gonna be doing three different night skies. But first we need to do the eyes for look two. And the eyes for look two are going to be the easiest look of the bunch for today. I'm going to mostly almost recreate the look that I was wearing in my yearly favorites video. But a few of you said that you liked that look and it is, so easy to recreate. So I figured it'd be a good one to add in if you're looking for something that's a little more quick. Just like with the first look, we're gonna start with the beach number five and the shade still shot again. But this time, instead of doing the whole crease that color, I'm just packing it in the outer corner. I'm gonna grab that Luxie 141 brush because it's nice and small. And I'm gonna dip into the shade Baja. And I'm gonna start with that in the crease, but I'm also gonna drag it down onto the lid and just blending it again with a clean brush. For the center part of the lid, I am going to leave that bare, but I don't want to leave it without anything over the primer. There isn't a shade in here that is close enough to my skin tone that's not going to make it look a little bit darker. The closest thing would be Weekender, but it is still a little bit more tan than my skin tone, so I'm gonna skip that. And I'm just going to set that center portion with my setting powder that I'm gonna use for the rest of my face. So I'm just dipping into it. I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way powder, and I'm just gonna pop that right in the center just to set the primer in place. So for the inner corner, we're going to do a pop of turquoise or teal or just bluish green. I never know which to call what. But I'm gonna go into the shade Big Sky. I'm gonna dip into Big Sky and I am not going to wet it 
first and then I'm going to probably wet it after. And the reason I like to not wet it at first when I do a pop of color on the inner corner is because I like to be able to get like maximum blendability out of it at first by packing it down in the area I want and then spreading it out softly. And then if I want more intensity, I go back in with a wet brush and add to it after it's already partially blended. And now that we have a nice soft area with that color in it, I'm gonna go back into Big Sky on the same brush, but this time I'm gonna wet it and I'm gonna keep it more concentrated toward the center. So now we get all that metallic intensity, but it was easy to blend it out. Just thought that little trick would be handy for you guys. Now to really punch up that inner corner, I'm gonna go back into the Stila liquid eyeshadows that we used the other day. Somebody left me a comment and said that it's actually an Italian pronunciation and it should be Mr. A. So maybe that's right. We're just gonna call them the Stila liquid shadows for now. There was also a comment that said they had better luck using it from a brush. So because I love the finish of it and I love the color, and I think it would look really nice over this inner corner. I'm gonna pick it up on a pencil brush and we're gonna see if we can get it to look better and be what we want it to be today. Obviously I'm using it in a much more concentrated space than I was the other day. So it's hard to say if it would still have any patchiness, but this is definitely one way to use it where we can enjoy that shade and that shine and have it be successful. So that's always fun. And once that liquid shadow is dry, I am going to go ahead and add a wing to this look. And I'm gonna try to make the wing on the thicker side, but also I want it to taper to be really thin toward the inner corner. Oh, and I'm using the Kat Von D dagger liner, by the way, I forgot to even say what I was using. I had as per usual and just threw some concealer and powder underneath my eyes to face born this way on both accounts. I'm just gonna drag that on the outer half of the lower lash line. For this little section right here, I don't think I wanna leave it empty like I did on the upper lash line over here, but I don't wanna add any depth and any darkness. I'm gonna go into this Stila liquid shadow on its own. Just take a tiny bit on that pencil brush and just dragging that on the bare section of that lower lash line and then softly blending that into the orange with my finger. And for the waterline, I wanna go with the nude, so I'm gonna go back with the same Urban Decay 24 seven pencil in Walk of Shame, again, like we used in the first look, and just run that through my waterline. Okay, so I put on the House of Lashes Stella Luxe Lash, nice flared at the ends to kind of mimic that shape with the wing. Now, this look is basically what I would wear if I was going somewhere and I wanted to have like a fun, colorful look and make it super easy. So like this is something that I do, this technique is something that I do often in my real life and I'm gonna show you the lip that I would pair with it in real life as the wearable version of this look. I'm gonna start by lining my lips with Kat Von D Lolita liner pencil, but I'm going to line them and then blend it toward the center. I'm not gonna line the whole lip heavily. And I'm gonna finish my lips with a gloss. This is the Lime Crime Wet Cherry Gloss in the color Bitter Cherry, one of my favorite nudish glosses. And this is look number two with the more wearable lip. So for this sky themed lip art to go with this look, I'm going with a night sky. But I'm also going to be using the Anastasia liquid lipstick in the color Nocturnal. The Makeup Geek plush matte lipstick in the color Wild Child. Normally as a topper, I would use the Urban Decay Vice lip topper in the color White Lie, but I actually don't know where mine went. So I'm going to use the same steel eyeshadow that we use on our eyes on the lips. It should work just fine. And again, the Suva Hydra Liner in Space Panda and the Popstar Clear Diamond Gloss. This is the more lip arty version of look number two. 
To start look number three, I'm gonna start by putting a nude through the crease just as a transition. This is the shade Weekender. I'm gonna use a Morphe M433 brush just to put that through the general crease area and start to blend it out. Next, I'm gonna go into the shade Riff. And I'm gonna start to put that through the crease as well, keeping it more concentrated. And I'm also going to start bringing that down onto the lid itself. Next, on an e.l.f. pencil brush, I'm gonna go into the shade Punk, and I'm gonna start using that to deepen up the outer corners and a little bit through the crease if I feel like it's necessary. And to make that even deeper on the edges, I'm gonna go one step farther and go into the shade Jet on the same brush but keep it concentrated just to the very outer edges. For the center of the eye, I'm gonna take a little shader brush. This is just like a crappy shader brush that came in a palette, but it gets the job done sometimes. And I'm gonna go into the shade Stranded, and I'm gonna put that in the center where I left it pretty much empty. All right, we wanna add a little bit of something something to the center of the lid here. So I'm picking up the Urban Decay Midnight Cowboy Heavy Metal Glitter Liner and I'm gonna put that over the center. And you're probably thinking at this point, wow, Nicole, I can't believe you're doing a fully neutral eye look. No, no, no. We're not quite done yet, my friend. Okay, I concealed and I put powder again. And for the bottom waterline, I'm gonna use the shade Deep End from Urban Decay. This is one of the 24-7 pencils. And I'm using that in the waterline, but I'm also going to bring it a little bit underneath the lower lashes and then smudge it in. Now on a small flat brush, I'm gonna go into the shade Radio, and I'm gonna press that on the outer half of where we just put down that pencil. And for the inner half, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna go back into that lighter turquoise teal shade, Big Sky. For this look, I went back to the lashes that we used in the first look that are a little bit more rounded shape because again, that complements this eye shape a little bit more. I say this eye shape, like my actual eye shape is changing, but you know what I mean, the shape of the makeup on my eyes. And for the lip, I want to do something deep something dark and something sultry. So I'm gonna use one of the Bite Crystal Cream lip crayons that I did a video about last week. This is the shade Molten Chocolate. It's like a metallic brownish burgundy. And for those asking, I do actually like these quite a bit after wearing them several times like in real life throughout the week. Uh, there are a few shades that I'm not like super crazy about just because they don't go with like, you know, they don't go with my flow. But this one in particular and like two others like, are really, really, really nice and they're very comfortable to wear. But I have also discovered that I like them a lot better over lip liner. So today I'm gonna be lining my lips with Kat Von D Vampire first. And this is the regular, more wearable version of the third look. So for the lip art version of this look, the sky that we're going to be doing today is going to be like a stormy sky. So I'm gonna use, again, mostly the same products. I may actually even dip into the eyeshadow palette this time for some shading colors, but the main color on the lips is going to be Anastasia Insomniac. I may jump back into a couple of the glitters or eye toppers if I feel like it needs it, but we're gonna see when we get there. Sometimes I don't like to plan too much ahead with these things. I kind of just like to take it as they come. And this is today's last look. And that, my little lovelies, is all for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today while I made these three looks and painted some random clouds on my lips. I hope you guys 
enjoyed the lip art even though the three of them were kind of similar. I was just sort of thinking it'd be cool to explore the idea of doing them like on a theme. Let me know in a comment down below if you like that or if you'd like to see more variety between them next time because we're just still kind of working out this type of format and I am very much open to suggestions. Please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it because it really helps me out and I would always appreciate it. And also, if you are new here, do not forget to subscribe because I would love to have you around for future videos. Uh, what else? Oh, if you want to keep up with me between videos, go ahead and follow me on other social media. I'm at Miss Quinn Face pretty much everywhere in the entire world. But if you really want to keep up with me, Instagram is where it's at. Instagram is what's up. Instagram is where I post the most. Wow, why did that become a rhyme? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one.